welcome to The 40-Year-Old Vegan, the show that helps you get leaner, cleaner, and greener in the second half of life. I'm Sandra Solani, the 58-Year-Old Vegan, cookbook co-author, and your host. Just about everyone will agree that wearing sunscreen is a great idea. There's just one problem. You're putting sunscreen all over the largest organ in your body, your skin, and most of it is filled with chemicals that you don't want. One young entrepreneur had an idea to make a better sunscreen using authentic organic products. He combined his love of the outdoors and a healthy lifestyle with his entrepreneurship degree from Cal State Fullerton University here in Southern California and created Rad Tection. R-A-D stands for Raw Authentic Defense. Please join me in welcoming to my kitchen the CEO and founder of Rad Tection, Dirk Youngkin. Hello, Sandra. Hello, Dirk. Welcome to my kitchen. How are you today? I'm doing me. great. I can't wait to learn about your product. I know that everybody's out there buying sunscreen, wearing sunscreen, and there are a lot of you know, myths and misconceptions that we want to get to. Mm -hmm. But first, tell me how you came up with the idea for yeah. protection. I mean, I would love to. I mean, it's a great way to start. So, basically, I'm outdoors a lot, and I have been since the day my parents were letting me run outside. So the, what I learned through being outside was that you need to wear sunscreen because these rays are so strong from the sun. However, as time went by, I continued to not really find a sunscreen that actually protected me. To then in high school, going into college, I started doing research to find out that these sunscreens had chemicals inside of them, somewhat of what you mentioned, to where now I'm seeing that this organ that we have on as our skin is now actually absorbing these chemicals. And people don't really know this, and it's now just coming to life. So what I did is I started saying, okay, if these chemical sunscreens aren't really protecting me, well then what I'll do is I'll try to make an alternative. So that's where Rad Tection came from. It's an organic, natural alternative. That is so great. Like you said, we want to put things on our body that are safe, and a lot of us don't think about it. We put it on our skin, we don't realize it's being absorbed. So tell me how your product differs from other products out there on the market. Absolutely, yes. So for one, as, as an outdoor enthusiast, someone that's always going outdoors and that's excited to be running around, what I know is that I like something that I can take with me that's not bulky and that's not inconvenient. So organic sunscreen, I wanted to make sure it was something that I could run around with. So this stick version is what allows me to put it on in certain spots, but then put it away so it's not taking up a lot of room. So if I have a surf backpack or even just a little bag, it can go all around with me and it's easy to apply to. So it's not inconvenient in any way. That's great. You go to the beach, the pool, and it's not a big bulky container. Exactly. And what's awesome is the whole stick version allows you to choose where you want to put it and you're not taking up too much of, of whatever you're putting on, and then you can rub it into where you need it. So it's not taking up, you're, you're spending it worthwhile. I love it. Now, there's a lot of talk about SPF, and people want to get the highest level of SPF. Are there any myths around that? Yeah, I mean, great question, and that's something that I started doing a lot of research into, because what I realized, so I used a lot of organic sunscreens before I went to Radtection. And what I learned is a lot of them were really pasty when I put them on my skin, and the worst was when I went into the ocean and they just fell right off. So then I actually started getting even more fried, and then what I needed to have learned was, wow, you actually have to protect yourself, but how much SPF is important? So what I learned is a 15 SPF to a 50 SPF is a difference of a couple percentages. So a 15 SPF protects 93% of UVA and UVB rays. A 15 going up to a 30 or a 50 is only by 5 to 7%, which is crazy because then you start getting into vitamin D, which is the sun's rays is what allows your skin to get vitamin D, which is natural and it's essential because you want to have calcium and that creates strong bones and everyone's trying to make sure that we don't break anything out there. And that's something that we're actually being deficient in if we don't get enough sun, which is why people should actually be wearing a lower SPF than a higher so that we can actually take in a little bit of the sun while we are out in it. That is a great idea and that's something a lot of people don't know, so thanks for educating us on oh, that. Oh, absolutely. So glad I could. So where can people find Rad Tension? So Rad Tension is online. And, and we're keeping it to a basic online platform right now. We have it on Amazon, and we have it on our radtection.com store. 
and these are the best ways to make it so you can purchase it and we can send it to you in no time at all. Okay, so that's R-A-D-T-E-C-T-I-O-N.com? Nailed it. I'm glad I spelled that right. That's not my strong point. So, yeah. <laughs> radtection.com. Yeah, and the whole idea is rad protection. So rad. we're taking out the pro and we're putting in the rad. It makes it a little oh, bit easier. Oh, I love it. I love yeah. it. That's a great idea. Congratulations to you. Thank you. Thanks yeah. for being here. And now, we're going to cook something delicious, one of Dirk's own creations. So today we're gonna to make one of Dirk's favorite recipes. It is an avocado taco with a corn and red pepper and green pepper salsa. And we've got a spicy vegan mayo that's gonna really bring on the heat. So Dirk's gonna get started. And Dirk, why don't you just tell us what you're adding to this great salsa? Yes, yeah, so I thought it would be great to bring rad texture towards a beachy feel. So what we're gonna be adding today is we're gonna start by adding some corn. And this is gonna be all for our salsa. So first we add the corn. And then we add the red onion. And then following that, we're gonna add the green and red bell pepper. Followed with the cilantro. Love the cilantro, my favorite. It's so fresh. Absolutely. So then you can start by mixing this up a bit. And then following that would be a great time to add some salt and pepper. Ready. Yeah, this is Beautiful. wonderful. And then you cannot forget the limes. Oh yeah. Practically a key ingredient. <laughs> and you can just squeeze it on in there. We like to use one whole one typically. And at that point, I can just start mixing it in. So while Dirk's mixing that, I'm gonna make the spicy vegan mayo. And yes, vegan mayo does exist and it tastes just like the real deal. So we're adding some spicy vegan mayonnaise. So mayo is the base and it is plant-based mayo, so no cholesterol to worry about. We're also using chopped jalapeno. Now what I did was I took out the seeds and the pith of the jalapeno because those add a lot of heat. Ooh. You can leave them in if you like. I have a feeling Dirk likes, likes the heat, right? Love the heat. <laughs> but what you want to make sure is when you cut the jalapeno, wash your hands with soap and water afterwards because if you don't and you touch your eye, you are not gonna have a good time. So, I have done it myself. Yes, I have done that many times. It is not fun. We're gonna put in some more lime juice and that is that sort of signature flavor that you love having in salsas and spicy mayos to give it that Mexican flair. We're also adding more cilantro. Oh, we're, uh, some is escaping, but we'll, we'll add that in there too. And I love cilantro. I think it adds just a wonderful citrusy flavor, but there are a lot of people that don't like it. So what I would suggest is if you're not a fan of cilantro, use flat leaf Italian parsley. It'll give you that nice fresh flavor, uh, but I am just a huge fan of cilantro. So here we go. We're gonna mix this and pulse it until it's a nice, smooth, creamy mayo. Hang on tight. And I'm gonna open it up. I'm just going to scrape off the edges a little bit and bring it in more. We want to make sure it's nice and creamy and it's getting a beautiful light green color. It smells good too. Whew. So let's put some on a plate. We're gonna get ready to plate our tacos. There's one more key ingredient in this taco, and it's avocado. And so many people love avocado. And I've gotta tell you, when, when Dirk first brought this recipe to me, the avocados were deep fried. And I know there's nothing that sounds better than a deep fried avocado, right? They're actually oh batter, uh, beer batter dipped and deep fried. Sounds good, and you're gonna be mad at me. I told them not to deep fry the avocado, so we're gonna just put them in plain. The reason we do that is, especially after we're over 40, we want to get rid of the oil as much as possible or reduce it as much as possible. So if you have a favorite recipe that calls for deep frying, just leave out the deep fry and put in the fresh avocado or whatever the item is, and you can still enjoy those recipes, but you can make lighter versions of them. Now, when you're a young guy like Dirk, you know, you can have those deep fried foods, but uh, as we get a little older, we want to reduce the fat as much as possible. And I think it's still gonna taste great because yeah. I can smell that salsa from here. Definitely. It's amazing. I'm still making bad decisions. <laughs> 
Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put the mayonnaise on first, and that'll give us a nice base. And it looks so pretty, look at these colors. Beautiful, green, fresh. And again, this is a plant-based mayonnaise, so you don't have to feel guilty about it, because there's no cholesterol. And then, if you want to add the avocados or the salsa, you can put the salsa on first and then we can add the avocados last. And we're using Cabo Chips brand tortillas. And what I love about these is they only have about four ingredients, so you know you're getting something good. And you find them in the dairy case because they're partially cooked. So you get to cook them at home and make home cooked tortillas. And they're gonna taste fresher because you make them yourself. Give that nice authentic cantina flavor. Oh, that looks so good. And I'm gonna grab salsa. Yeah, this looks wonderful. Oh, look at wow. the colors. Lots of antioxidants in here. We want those to help us be healthy. And there's vitamin C with the lime. Oh, beautiful. And of course, we've got some sriracha sauce for those of you who like it hot. I think I'm gonna skip the sriracha. Do you, do you want sriracha, Dirk? Absolutely. Oh, yeah, I knew he was gonna say that. <laughs> he lives on the edge. Guy. He lives on the edge. <laughs> These look so pretty. And that is one healthy taco. I'm gonna take a bite and mm, I cannot so wait to try this. Mm. The vegan mayo is so fresh. It's got a kick of heat from the jalapeno. You've got that citrusy uh, cilantro and lime flavor. Mm. This is pretty good. Not bad, even without the, the deep frying. I think, I think we got a winner here. I cannot complain, <laughs> I'll tell you right now. Very nice. Now, this show is all about getting leaner, cleaner, and greener. And I wanted to ask you, your product really is helpful when it comes to the environment. Tell me about that. Yeah, you know, something that's awesome is taking care of ourselves, and first and foremost. But then you have to look at the things around us. And what I started to learn was that these chemicals also are altering outside ecosystems and when these chemicals fall off into the ocean I always like to give this description they have to go somewhere because they're not biodegradable like a lot of natural things so what they do is they have to find a host they end up going into this host and then they build up and it turns into a bacteria which explodes now this is happening around the whole entire nation and Hawaii is becoming the first state to ban these chemicals from being in the sunscreens that are being sold in Hawaii now that's just the start. I could not imagine where it's going to go next. That is amazing. Hawaii is taking the lead on this and I didn't even know about this until I talked to you. So thank you for letting us know about how what we're doing is not only impacting our own health, but the environment. So if you want to learn more about rad protection, sun protection, go to radtection.com. That's R-A-D-T-E-C-T-I-O-N.com. Check out Dirk's story, how it all came about, and you can buy those products for yourself. Thank you for joining us today on The 40 Year Old Vegan. Welcome back to the 40 year old vegan. It is time for dessert and we're making a raw vegan dessert. This is a pear terrine with a vanilla creme anglaise. And I know it sounds complicated, but it's super easy. So we're gonna start with our crust and the terrine just means layers. And we're gonna start with the crust and that is made out of just some basic ingredients. We have dried apricots and this is gonna give it that stickiness we need to hold together. And it's gonna also give some great sweetness. We're then adding pecans, and the pecans are gonna give it a crunchy, buttery flavor, which is so good in a dessert. Every time I use pecans, I feel like it's the greatest thing in the world, like I'm having something really special. The next thing we're gonna add is agave nectar, and this is also gonna help it all stick together and adhere, because we're gonna need that as we build this terrain. We're building layers. And the last thing might sound a little counterintuitive, but it's a big pinch of salt. And the combination of the sweet and salty in the crust really works beautifully on this. In fact, a lot of people mention that when they have this dessert. So we're gonna just mix this until it all gets really sticky. So it's nice and crumbly and we want it to stick together. 
The next part of this, and this is the pear part of the pear terrine, we're chopping up some pears in little tiny cubes, and I'm gonna add some vanilla. Now, because we're not baking this dessert, you wanna use an alcohol-free vanilla. Otherwise, you're gonna taste the alcohol. Uh, when you use alcohol-free uh, or alcohol in a vanilla, it bakes off during the baking process, but when you're using a raw dessert, you don't have the chance to bake it off. So we're just gonna put an alcohol-free vanilla in with the pears, and we're gonna mix them and just let it marinate in there. It's gonna give it a wonderful flavor. And if you have a vanilla bean, you can even scrape a vanilla bean in there, and it's gonna be wonderful. And I love using pears. I just think they're special. I like using them around the holidays, but this is really something you can use anytime pears are in season, and you can use any style of pear you like. So now let's take our crust. We wanna take the blade out and get that sticky apricot crust. And this has such a wonderful, sweet and salty flavor to it. And I'm gonna build this in a little tower, okay? I wanna give it some height. So I'm gonna put our crust into this little ring mold. And if you don't have a ring mold, you don't really need one, you can just put it into a plate. But sometimes I like to build the dessert and give it a little bit of height. So I'm gonna just put enough to cover the bottom and I'm going to press it down there. I'm going to kind of pack it in there and put about a half inch there base and it's nice and uh, malleable and it's going to just set really beautiful in there. And a little bit more to give it our base and it smells so good and this dessert requires no baking or cooking so you can make it very quickly. Once I have the base in there I'm going to spoon in some of the pears and they are just marinating in that vanilla. It's a wonderful flavor combination. And we put in another layer. And then once the pears are in there, we're gonna go back to the crust and add a layer of the apricot pecan crust. And it really is very easy to work with. It, it's sticky enough to conform to the mold, but it's not so sticky that it's just all over your hands. And so we add another layer until all you see is the crust. And once you have that layer on board, just push it in a little bit with your spoon. We want to get it sort of nice and tight. And I've actually done this once. I've had guests over and I let them build their own and it was fun for them to learn how to make it. It's kind of fun working with ring molds. So I'm adding some more pear and we're getting closer to the top of our terrain. And again, it's just layering, but sometimes layers can make desserts more interesting. But again, if you don't have the ring mold, you can just put this right on top of each other in a dish and it's all gonna taste good. And then I'm gonna top it with a little bit more we're going to use our spoon, just give it a good push. Okay, and we are at the top. So I'm going to wipe my plate out. The next thing we're going to do, I mentioned to you a vanilla creme anglaise sauce. Now that may sound very fancy, but in the non-vegan world, Creme anglaise is essentially melted vanilla ice cream. So what you do is you get some vegan vanilla ice cream, you set it on the counter and you let it melt and that's it. That's your sauce and it tastes amazing. So what we're gonna first take our terrine and we're gonna pull off the mold by pressing down on the top and pulling up on the sides. And this works uh, seven out of 10 times. So let's see, aha, there it is. So we've got our little tower there, and we are gonna pour in a little bit of the creme anglaise around it. Give it this nice little creaminess. And you can put as much or as little as you want. And then I'm gonna add some beautiful, fresh raspberries, because that just adds a pop of color some beautiful acidity, and the acidity is important because it's a very rich dessert. The pecans, the apricots are very rich, so you want something to break it up. I'm gonna put a pecan on top, a pecan half, 
and just a little bit of green to make it look pretty. And that is our pear terrine with vanilla creme anglaise. How beautiful is that? So making vegan desserts can be really simple and delicious. It's something you can feel good about and make so quickly and easily. So thank you for joining us here today on The 40-Year-Old Vegan. And remember, when you go plant-based, the second half of life can be the best half of life. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.